is what history is. History is a record of what happened in the past and how you ended up where you're now. And I go back on Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, because he became famous as the, as the president who basically helped America rebuild. And rebuild means basically, number one, you give people jobs in factories, and the factories will sell the jobs, sell the, excuse me, sell whatever, the, whatever they make to other people, and you give money to the families. So Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR, is very famous in history because they got America working again. This is the term. They got America to start working again. So my father was working for the the company, uh, with the uh, agency, I forget the name of it, and they were cutting trees. That's what they did. Now, in different parts of the country, they did different things. In some parts of the country, they were building libraries. If you're all in the western part, western part of the United States, a lot of it is desert. You don't have a lot of trees there. And so they're doing other things. And so Franklin basically, and these are the key word, experimenting, to find out what works and what doesn't work. What works, you continue and expand, and what doesn't work, you stop and do something else. Why waste money? So my father was in there for a number of years, and eventually the U.S. came out, came back, because 1941 was the year, very important year in 1941. I have to back up a moment. World War II basically started in 1939. Nazi Germany under a man called Adolf Hitler was the leader in Germany. And so he basically attacked with his German army, attacked the country of Poland in 1939. If I remember right, it was September 1. He had one country send his the army, Hitler, into Poland and took over Poland. Took power in Poland. And then the Polish people had to, a lot of people ran away, and a lot of the Polish men ran away to Britain because Britain was there and so they could they could join the British army or join the British, the uh, Polish army and uh, you had stuff like that. So the World War II basically started in 1939. He was there in Europe for two years. Now this goes into history again. America did not want to get involved in European problem. Now Canada did because Canada was very close to Britain. So in the United States, the American government refused to join the war in Europe. They said it's a European problem. We do not want to get involved because we are rebuilding now. They started rebuilding in 1931. So America said, no, we do not join World War II. So you had Americans in American men in, in America that wanted to fight against Nazi Germany. Nazi is N-A-Z-I. Singular and plural is Nazis with an S. And so the people in America, well the people in Canada, the, they were part of the British Empire, so they were join, going to Britain and fighting for the British in Britain. And they were fighting in Europe. The fighting was not in, in Britain, it was in Europe because Nazis went in and they invaded France and some other countries. Italy got involved and Italy got involved. So you had basically Italy and <coughs> Germany were fighting a war and other countries were fighting against them in Europe. So Canadians would go to Britain and join British forces. They had branches of the British service that were Canadian. Canadian uh, people from Canada would work and they fought. We're talking about soldiers now. We're talking about combat soldiers. Combat soldiers. Combat basically means one thing. Combat means you're fighting in a war. That's W-A-R. And you got a lot of weapons and you're killed. You're being killed and wounded and killing other people. So in the United States now, going back to the United States, you had some American men, particularly young American men, wanted to fight the Nazis. Again, the Nazis were not in America. They were fighting in Europe against British. And then the British colonies. You had a lot of colonies that were under Britain. So people from the British colonies were coming to Britain and also fighting. So the war was going on. But America said, no, we want nothing to do with it. 
nothing to do with it. We were in World War I and we don't want it again. And so you had young people in, I'm talking about men now, young men in a Britain, not Britain, excuse me, young people in America were going into Britain and joining the British forces. That means British Army and British colonial troops, etc. Well, this lasted from 1939 to 1941. In 1941, that's 1941, things changed in the United States because the U.S. was not involved. It was sending a lot of supplies by ships, ships means boats, sending a lot of supplies to Britain, a lot of supplies, war supplies. Britain was getting supplies by America. America says, we will send supplies to Britain, but we are not going to fight. And so in 1941, you had a different problem arose. Now I have to back up a moment. So this is going on in Europe. So if you look at Asia, and you look at a country called Japan, Japan now is moving from Germany and Italy together into Japan. So Japan was basically expanding a lot. Now Japan as a country still still has a lot of problem. It has a large population, very large population, and you had to have jobs in that. And they needed a lot of supplies. Now one of the supplies that was very, very important, very important, was oil, also called petroleum. Because you have all these machines scattered around and you need to have a lot of oil. And the oil is basically two things. In the United States, oil had two factors that were important. One is you use the machines to work, like grease, and then the secondly, you use it to work in cars. It means their fuel. Well, Japan wanted to have a lot of access to petroleum producing countries. Now, Japan did not produce a lot of petroleum, but the countries south of Japan down in Southeast Asia, you had a lot of these British colonies and some French colonies there. That's where the oil was. Oil was in the ground and you pump it out and then you send it somewhere. So Japan decided they wanted to get some of the oil out of Southeast Asia. Now I mentioned Southeast Asia because we are now in something called Northeast Asia. And that basically is China and Japan and Korea. And if you look at the map, you can see why it's in the northern part. So Japan wanted to have more. And America was limiting the amount of oil and petroleum it would give to Japan. So you got another problem now. This is a problem called ignorance. Ignorance. And when I'm talking about ignorance, you've got a military force. Military force means basically army and navy. And then you eventually later air force. you got air force. you got three branches, basically. Well, Japan had a problem. It could not get enough oil. It wanted more oil. And America would not give America, Japan a lot of oil. They would give Japan oil against Germany and Italy. Italy had actually invaded, Italy had invaded Africa. Notice what I said now. I'm talking about North America and Africa <coughs> and Europe. And now you had the situation in China. And Japan basically was invading China. And you had, that was Southeast China. And then the Southeast countries. And they invaded it because the Japanese military, notice I use the word military, wanted more petroleum and more supplies, stuff like steel and uh, iron, for example. But petroleum was very important. So the, I mentioned the word ignorance. Ignorance is mean lack of knowledge. You don't have enough information, knowledge to understand what's going on. Well, Japan had a huge problem at that time. Now, why am I talking about Japan? Well, I'm a history major. I got several degrees in it. And I'm living now in Korea right now. And 
I have been in Southeast Asia and I've been in China. I've even been up in Mongolia, which is a country between Russia, now Russia and China, because I like to travel. And so Japan had a problem. The problem in Japan was very simple. The Japanese military wanted to control the government. But, there's a but here, but the Japanese officers had very limited, notice the word limited experience, limited knowledge about Asia. All that Japan could see is they saw that the oil in Southeast Asia was going to Britain and France, mainly Britain, because they had British colonies there. Or they had, the Americans had the Philippines there and the Philippine oil was going to America. So the question for the Japanese officer is, how can we, it was called natural resources. How can we get natural resources? How can we get the oil we need? We need it. Well, in 19, early 1930s, early 1930s, Japan invaded Manchuria. That's M-A-N-C-H-U-R-I-A. Manchuria. And I've not been to Manchuria. Not been there, but I know what it's like. Manchuria is between uh, the mainland of, of China, part of China, and also in Korea. So they decided they were going to go into Manchuria. And again, there's movies about this like that. And they moved into Manchuria because Manchuria had oil and other resources Japan won. So Japan invaded Manchuria. This is 1930s. And they took control of Manchuria. And they had a, Japan, a, a Chinese guy that made emperor of Manchuria, but it was all controlled by Japan. But, there's a but again, but they didn't get enough, what you call, natural resources. And so they were looking at Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. And if you look at the map, you'll notice a lot of them. There's Vietnam and Thailand and Malaysia, Indonesia, that's all Southeast Asia. And then you have Hong Kong as part of uh, Southeast Asia there. And so the Japanese military thought, we have a very powerful military and we need more supplies, more natural resources. So we're going to invade another country, which they did, they invaded Manchuria, which is part of but Japan, as kids, part of China. And they took it over. And then they had the, the, all the stuff Manchuria was going to Japan. Now they did one other thing. They had a major attack on a major city in China. Major attack. And they were going in, in China now, not Manchuria. Manchuria is a region, northeast China. And they came in and they took over the city and they were killing everybody killing everybody, men, women, and children just being killed. And so they were there. But then when they started attacking Southeast Asia, these the British, mainly British colonies, and then you also had American colony in the Philippines, and then the, you had a couple of French colonies. Vietnam, for example, was French. And they, want, they invaded Southeast Asia. And so they wanted all these resources. Now I'm report, I'm mentioning ignorance. Ignorance is lack of knowledge. And this is why I suggest to you, if you're watching this, you study some history. And you got all kinds of history. You got old history and then middle history and then current history and then regional history by Africa, by country and then by continent. Is basically what happened at some time period that led into what's happening now. So the Japanese military decided they were going to attack Southeast Asia. So they even attacked the Philippines, which was an American colony, and you had American government, the American government was taking care of it, and American soldiers there in the Philippines. So in the Philippines now, you had American soldiers who were fighting with Filipinos, that's the word for natives of Philippines, against the Japanese. And so it was going on there. In the other countries, 
the, Japan was attacking all of them because Japan wanted military occupation and they wanted to have all these natural resources go back to the go back to Japan and not go to Britain or France or even the United States because they wanted to be a military power. Notice my emphasis. But the problem was, and I'm emphasizing this many times now, the Japanese military was kind of stupid and not only stupid, they were also ignorant because most of the officers had limited, limited knowledge about the world outside of Japan. They know a little bit about Japan and Korea and China, but not that much about others. I'll give you one example. You have something called an embassy. That's E-M-B-A-S-S-Y. Embassy basically means a representative of one country in another country. Usually it's in the capital city. So in the United States at that time, you had a Japanese embassy, and this is countries exchanged embassies because this was a lot of dialogue. I mean, you had a lot of information and a lot of deals made. And then you have the ambassador is the head of the embassy. So in the Japanese embassy in the 1930s now, notice the 1930s, you had a Japanese man that later became an admiral in the Japanese Navy. And I can't remember his name offhand because I'm old and I forget stuff. He came there and he was a very smart Japanese admiral, means officer in the Japanese Navy. And he learned English. He learned English. So while he was an officer in the Japanese embassy, he was just out, well, it was in Harvard, which is just outside of Boston, Massachusetts, where Harvard is. And so he decided to go to American University, graduate school, to learn, learn about America in an American university. That was Harvard. So he did it for a while. And he came out with some very famous in history, I mean, famous quote. He, I can't remember his name offhand. But he said, Japan, now this is what the Japanese admiral said, and he was an embassy member. He said, Japan should never attack the United States of America. Why? Because behind every blade of grass, that means one piece of grass, there is an American with a rifle. Now, what did that mean? Behind, this is, of course, this is an exaggeration, but he was saying if you attack America, the Americans, not just the military, but the citizens, will fight you with weapons. In America, if you look at the map, you look at a globe, you look at a map, America is much, much bigger in population and in area against Japan. And he said, basically, you will not win. Basically, he was saying, you will not defeat America. America is too big for you. And that was the famous thing. Behind every blade of grass, there's an American citizen with a rifle going to kill your soldiers in the United States. Now, this is important later, because the Japanese made only three attacks, well, technically two attacks, two attacks on American homeland or American land, means American national property. One is they attacked some islands, a couple small islands off the coast of Alaska, and between Alaska and Russia, you had some islands, and some of the islands were Russian islands, and then you had the division in the Russian islands and American islands. So they attacked and occupied a few, I don't remember the number anymore, a few American islands, and they're called the Aleutians. But then they left, because there was not much in the Aleutians. But there was one Japanese attack, one Japanese attack by the Japanese Navy on the mainland, that's mean the main part of the United States continent, all the way from the Pacific coast over to the Atlantic Ocean and between Canada and Mexico. They made one attack in California by a submarine, Japanese submarine attack, 
sent some missiles to some Japanese to some American place. Only one a Japanese attack by a submarine. And so the Japanese admiral was pretty smart. And he said, you don't attack a country like America. You don't attack a country like America. 